Hi, and welcome to lesson three of the linear theory curriculum for classical guitar and piano here at NCSSM. This lesson deals with key signatures, and it's the first introduction that you will have to a really useful tool in music theory called the circle of fifths. So let's get right to work. Um, first of all, let's take a look at the staff, and today we're going to talk about key signatures. Now, Key signatures are used to indicate sharps and flats that form uh, a given scale. Quite honestly, it makes scales a lot easier when you know how to do sharps and flats in a key signature. First, let's start with the sharp key signature. Now, a lot of kids don't realize this, but it's really important to know that whenever you see one sharp in a key signature, that one sharp is always F sharp. Okay. So if you see one sharp in that key signature, it's always F sharp. And what that really indicates is no matter what, um, what notes are written in, on the staff, every time you see a note written, you'll play it as F sharp. The second sharp in the series is C sharp, and it is always second. So if you see two sharps in the key signature, they are always F sharp and C sharp. Okay. Now, and, and then it goes on from there. The order is F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. So if there are four sharps in a key signature, those four sharps are always F, C, G, and D. So in this case, it would be F, C, G, and D. And in this case, it would be F, C, G, and D. If there are five sharps in the key signature, it's F, C, G, D, and A. Hopefully you follow that and you understand what we're doing there. If there's six, F, C, G, D, A, E. And so then we would go ahead and add that E in the bass and in the treble. And then finally, if there are seven, we go ahead and add the B here and we go ahead and add the B here. And that gives you your sharp key signatures. Now, um, let me get rid of those sharps and let's go to flats. And I should say uh, that a lot of students like to remember that order of sharps by using um, a mnemonic device. Let's just put a little reminder here. F, C, G, D, a, E, B is the order. Now, I'm not a mnemonic device guy, but some people are, and the mnemonic device people use for this is frogs can go dancing and eat bananas. So if you want to remember that little sentence, frogs can go dancing and eat bananas, that will always give you the order of sharps. Flats have a different order. The order for flats is B, E, A, D, G, C, F. And the mnemonic device that some people use for that is B, E, A, D, good, clean, fun, or bead, good, clean, fun. Uh, again, not really the way I do it, but I totally understand if that helps you. So if you see one flat in a key signature, that flat is always B flat. Two, B and E. Three, B, E and A. Four flats, B, E, A and D. If there are five, B, E, A, D, G. If there are six, B, E, A, D, G, C. And then the last one, of course, is F. And there are your key signatures for flats. B, E, A, D, good, clean, fun. Okay? So that's your key signatures. Now, the next thing I want to introduce to you is the concept of using <coughs> something called the circle of fifths. The circle of fifths is a magnificent tool, and I recommend that you use it just like you would use a um, calculator in uh, a math course. The way it works is this, is it tends to give you 
the name of a key signature, in this case we have a C, and the number of sharps or flats that are in that key signature. You'll notice here at the very top, for C, there are no sharps or flats. So what that really is saying, that if you have a C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, there will be no sharps or flats to get your whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. You don't need to add any sharps or flats to that. C major is basically all white keys. If you go to the right, the circle of fifths helps you with your um, sharp key signatures. A G major scale has one sharp. Now, if we go back to our sharps, that one sharp, when there's one sharp in a key signature, it's always F. So, for a G major scale, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, and I promise you, if you go through and you do your whole half pattern, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Feel free to check me on that. That will work every single time. D major has two sharps. We go back to this. The two sharps are always the first two here, F and C. So if we do our D major scale, then D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D, promise you, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. It'll work for all of these. It will work for all of these. So, and you've got a circle of fifths on your uh, theory assignment. Same deal with the flats. It works the exact same way. And the other thing is, if I asked you to write the key signature for the key of, let's say, for the key of B flat, then really to write a key signature in B flat, it gets two flats, and those flats are B flat and E flat. Or in bass clef, those flats would be B flat and E flat. Okay? So that circle of fifths gives you a ton of information that you can use. Okay? Now, I have uh, uh, one other thing that I want to show you on this circle of fifths. Down here on the bottom, these three key signatures, D flat major, F sharp major, and B major, also have an enharmonic spelling. Remember, enharmonic means another name for the same thing. B major has five sharps, but C flat major has seven flats. F sharp major has six sharps, but the enharmonic key, G flat major, has six flats. And finally, D flat major has five flats. What's the enharmonic spelling of D flat? If you said C sharp, you were correct, and it has seven sharps. So these three key signatures, D flat, F sharp, and B each have an enharmonic key signature that you need to consider as well. And that is spelled out on your worksheet as well. And that's going to be important to today's assignment. Let's go to the assignment. If you take a look at the first assignment, you'll see something that looks like this. It gives you a scale, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C-sharp and D, and then it gives you a little double bar like this. And it says, study the sharps and flats used in the scale and write the correct key signature for each. I want you to write the correct key signature here at the end of the line, recreate the treble or bass clef, depending on the line, and then what are the sharps that are used? An F-sharp and a C-sharp. Don't write that F-sharp down here that would be incorrect. OK? 
Okay? You want to write it on the absolute correct line. And you can always refer back to the front page of your theory to know exactly where that line is. Now in part two, it's a little tricky to understand what they're doing here in part two, so follow me here. They give you a key signature, and I think this first one in part two is in base clef. So there's a key signature that looks something like this. Um, six flats, right? B, E, A, D, G, and C. And it says, identify the given key signature. Well, you do that down here. This is uh, the key of. So to, to identify that, you want to go back here. And how many flats was it again? It's six flats. So six flats is down here on the bottom, the key of G flat. So let's get to that. And we're going to identify that as G flat major. And then look across the page, and it gives you another bass clef. And it says key of, and you got a blank. And it asks for the N harmonic key. Well, the N harmonic key of G flat, there's our G flat. The N harmonic key is, I'll get another color here just to remind you again, it's F sharp. So here, over on the right, the N harmonic key is F sharp, and then we want you to write the key signature for F sharp. So we come back here, and it's six sharps, F, C, G, D, A, E, and then F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D, A, E. And that would be the correct answer for the N harmonic key signature for G flat major. Hope that all makes sense. Note that on part two, there is another uh, third example of that up on the top of page 14. And then finally, on, uh, at the end on part three, simply for each key indicated, write the approach appropriate signature in both clefs. And I think that should be fairly um, easy to understand. And so really what we're looking for is like, for instance, on number one, they ask for the key signature for B flat major. To get that, I go over here. I look at my circle of fifths. B flat major has two flats. Those two flats are B flat and E flat. And so B flat, E flat, B flat, E flat. And that would be the correct answer for uh, number one of part three. You can do all of those. I hope that all makes sense. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to come and ask.